Hey guys, welcome to Painting with Sounds, where we provide uh, free education for people wanting to learn the craft of poetry. Um, in this series, we are going through uh, Shakespeare's sonnets, and we are breaking down the uh, poetic meter. Um, so I just want to do a little recap. Uh, this is sonnet number four, but uh, first a little recap. So when you're trying to find the... Uh, let me start here. So what poetic, poetic meter is, is an organized rhythm. Okay, guys? Um, and what happens is the poet strategically places certain words and syllables at key locations within the line to create the rhythmic effect, okay? Um, though not all these, so while all of Shakespeare's lines are iambic pentameter, there are some variations and substitutions within the line um, that can and do occur, as we'll see in this poem. Um, so when you're trying to find which syllable or word is stressed or assented, as the correct term is, uh, there's a couple things I want you guys to keep in mind. Uh, first, uh, you, the first step is you highlight all the important monosyllable words. So it would be the verbs, nouns, adjectives, and adverbs. Um, then you highlight the primary stress in a multisyllable word. That's step two. And then the step three is you promote or demote. Uh, and promotion is when you have three light beats in a row, the middle gets promoted to an incented. And when you get three heavy beats in a row, the middle one gets demoted to unascented. Okay. Now the one substitution variation that we've been seeing a lot of, so I've been wanting to tell, I keep saying this, is that it's very common for lines in Iambic pentameter to open with a trochi, which is a heavy beat, light beat, instead of the light beat, heavy beat. Um, so let's kind of get into this poem. I'll give it a read, and then uh, we'll go through it line by line. So, unthrifty loveliness, why doubt thou spend upon thyself thy beauty's legacy? Nature's bequest gives nothing but doth lend, and being frank, she lends to those who are free. Then, Beatrice, the God, why do thou abuse the, the bountiness law just given thee to give? Profitless, you sir, why dost thou use so great a sum of sums that can't not live for having traffic with thyself alone? Though of thou self thy sweet self dost deceive, then how, when nature calls thee to be gone, what acceptable art it cost thou leave? The unused beauty must be tombed with thee, which used it lives the executor to be. Okay, guys. Um, so, again, we're not going to go through the meaning of this particular poem. We're just going through the poetic meter. I will have a separate video on the actual meaning and some of the more other devices being used in this. Alright guys, so let's kind of go into this first line. So, on thrifty loveliness why thou thee spend, step one, uh, highlight all the important monosyllable words. So we have spend, right? Spend. Um, but then we have why doubts thou, and I'm going to come back to this um, in a little bit. So I, we'll, we'll do this, we'll do this, uh, this foot last, because there's something cool going on here. So let's go to step two, highlight the primary stresses in multi-syllable words, where we have the thrift and unthrifty, right? And then we have the uh, love and loveliness, right? Um, so then we have, uh, we have a, now do we have any promotions, right? We have the leanness y, right? So if I just kind of show you. Light, light, light. So that gets promoted, right? Now, I want to stop right there here. Um, we have y doubts thou. So we could say light, 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 right? And promote this, and this would be totally acceptable. This would be totally acceptable. But because there is a question being asked, as we can see with the... Um, question mark at the end of line two. Could you not say, could you not put the stress on why? Why do you spend? It's what Dallas is really do. Why do you spend? Do you, do you kind of hear what I'm saying? So you could, you could uh, put the ascent on this. And this, this is a little bit, there's a little bit of ambiguity and, and ambiguity here, right? Um, so if you do put it on here, you have to ask yourself, is it permittable? Because this would make this mid, a midline trochi, right? This would make right here a, a, a trochi. Um, is this permittable? Is this permittable, right? 
And the answer is yes, because it is following a punctuation mark. Anytime you see a trote, usually troches within the line, within the middle of the line, follow it, some type of punctuation mark or grammatical pause like we have here, right? So I'll just highlight online that just so you can see it um, so that right there allows this to be a possibility this allows that to be a possibility but I'm not saying that's necessarily the right scan so this is an ambiguity and this is I think we've talked about this before um, and when you get into situations like this there is a rhetorical stress it's like when you put in the affliction the speech affliction uh, inflection on um, like because sometimes people stress different words to make a point right so that is that is a that is a possibility um, so that's really up to you how you want to read the line right and this is this is the thing that sometimes people don't realize about meters there is some ambiguity there is sometimes some spots where there can be uh, interpretations uh, differ and that's fine that's totally fine it, it's not don't get frustrated just because your scan or the way you read the poem doesn't quite match somebody else right so I might keep it this because I think it's an interesting I think it's an interesting scan so if you have a uh, midline trochi, right, and a uh, rhetorical stress, right. They are rhetorically stressing. They are making the point to stress that, right. And like I said, if you did it, you scan it the other way. When you said why do why do you spend, like right? that'd be totally acceptable too. It could be all pure ironic. Um, so don't get frustrated if your scan doesn't always match my scan or such. Like I'm just showing, pointing this out where there's this rooms for interpretation. Okay, so let's go to the next line. Um, Upon thyself, thy beauty's legacy. Okay, so uh, first thing, do we have any um, important monosyllable words? No, we don't have any important monosyllable words in this line. Okay, so that's the first thing to notice. So we gotta go to step two. Highlight the primary stress in the multisyllable words. Well, that we got plenty. So we got pawn, right? We got self, we got bu, right, and we got leg, right, so that's quite a bit, and then we got to, uh, and then again, we got legacy, so we're going to highlight the y, right, because um, like I said, if it's at the end of the line, um, and there's no other beat beyond it, it gets promoted, right, that's a it's a standard thing, promoted. So if we just break these apart, upon, oop, upon thyself, thy beauty's leg, legacy, iambic pentameter, perfect iambic pentameter, right? No variations, nothing weird going on. Cool, right? Nice. All right. So next thing we're gonna be looking at in line nine three, nature's bequest gives nothing but doth lend. Um, and so step one, do we have any, um, do we have any important words? What we do, we got lend, and then we got gives, right? And some of you might highlight, some of you might highlight doth. Some of you might do this, okay? Um, we'll come back to that, but some of you might do that. Um, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, and then step two, highlight all the uh, stress syllables and multi-syllable words. We got nay and nature, and then we got quest and bequest, and then we got noth and nothing, right? And then do we get any promotions or demotions? Well, we do have light, light, light. Um, so we could highlight that, right? Some of you might want to highlight this and make this a double ionic. That that's very close. It's very ambiguous. Um, I tend to go with this. Uh, I think this might be a little bit closer to what he wants, but you could do this as a double ionic. Um, but I'm going to keep it with this, right? Just to keep keep the one, two, three step we got. So if we look at this, we open for Troshi, and then it's I'm. Right? And then we have a uh, we have a spawn day in the middle. And then we got a. Uh, so nature's. Bequest gives nothing but doth lend. Uh, so this line's got, you know, Troji opening. Sponde. Maybe a double ionic, but I'm not. This line's pretty busy, right? So we can see this. Um, now, this could also be called an iambus. Some of you might call this. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm not going to call this a sponde. All right. 
So this is a very clear case of a demotion, right? So step three, do we have a demotion, right? We got heavy, heavy, heavy. We all see it. So that gets demoted, right? So Trochi Ohmba, uh we got a demotion in this here. Pretty obvious, right? Nice, right, guys? Demotion. Okay, so that's line three. And being frank, she lends to those are free, right? So that's line four. So step one, highlight all the multi-syllable words. So we got frank, and we got lens, right? Then we got free. Cool. Step two, highlight all the uh, stress syllables and the multi-syllable words. So we got the be and being. Um, okay, and then do we got any promotions or demotions? We got, light, yeah, we got light, light, light. So the those gets uh, promoted. So again, pretty uh, iambic to and being frank, she lends to those or free. Cool, right? Iambic pentameter. Perfect iambic pentameter. Cool. Next line. Then butyris to God, why thou, thou abuse? Um, and if you're looking at this line, it kind of reminds me of line one a little bit, right? Because there's a question being asked, and you guys know what I'm going to probably say. But let's kind of go through it. Uh, do we have any important monosyllable words? No, not right off the bat. You could do why off the bat, but uh, we'll come back to that last. Uh, what about uh, in multi-syllable words? What we do, we got the bu, and then we got the nig, and then we got the abuse. Okay, and I think, I think I'm actually saying this wrong. I think it's God. I think that God, I'm sorry. This is not a word. I can, Believe it or not, this word is not. If you dictionary this word, it does not appear. I've, I've done it before. Um, God. Yep, that's it's that's how they're doing it. So this is the second syllable that's stressed. Right? Sometimes these words are not used in our current um, vocabulary, so sometimes it's hard for me to know how they are pronouncing them. Um, and we got this. I want to just break this apart. Buterus. Do we got uh, any promotions? Well, we got this, right? And then here we come back to this. You could, again, highlight this. Why do thou abuse? Or why do you abuse, right? Um, I kind of like the why. I think I, I'm, I'm always going to point out a rhetorical stress when I see it, right? So, the buterus nagard, why does you abuse, right? So we have rhetorical stress. And then, you know, midline, Trochi. Cool, right? That's what's going on here, the same as this line. So, okay. The next line, the bounterous Lord gets given thee to give, right? Um, so, step one, highlight all the uh, monosyllable words. We got the one, we got give, right? Give right here. Okay, and step two, uh, highlight the multi-syllable words um, so we got the bound I'm sorry the stress syllables are multi-syllable words we got the bound and then we got the law right and then we got the give right and then do we have any promotions or demotions well if you break this apart we got in the year two so light 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 and you got the so now some of you might be say bound tourist, like you might be pronouncing this as a three three syllable uh, word. It is obvious by how how he has constructed this line. He wants this pronounced as a bound tis, or he wants these these two vowels here merged into one, um, merged into one. So there's no um, there's no um, there's no break. This counts as a single syllable. So the bound tris law. Just given thee to give. Cool, right? We all see this. Oop. Not, not that break. Oop, where am I going? Okay, cool, right, guys? Um, so, this again, we have a uh, illusion. That'd be the alluding of these two syllables together, and then. Make it iambic, perfect iambic. Pentameter. Cool.
cool, right? Next line. Frog fitless. You sure? Why does thou use? Again, we got that Y in the middle. This should be a pretty common pattern, right? So this is a this is a very difficult line to uh, scan. So let's just kind of is any mo very important monosyllable words. What we do, we have the use, right? Put that there, and then we gotta go uh, the multisyllable words. Profit, profit. So with a T, then we get the use, right? Um, let me kind of break this apart. You sir, right? So we got we got three syllables. Um, so let's look. Do we got a light, 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 right? And kind of, I, I want to kind of keep this, even though this, I'm gonna highlight this, even though um. Even though this is not this this might look like a um this might look like a uh an anapist, like light light heavy, light light heavy that does look it. It's really this comma here that saves it, guys. So I just want you to be aware. This comma is is the thing that saves it. It's it's this is the thing that lets it's kind of the trick that keeps people from or should keep people from making this an anapist. And if you did get an anapist, like if people did say this was an anapist, you shouldn't be mad at that scan, right? Because um, you can see it, right? Light, light, heavy, light, light, heavy, right? You can see why that some would consider this uh, an anapist. But it really is the comma here that, um, believe it or not, that comma is very important, right? If that comma wasn't here, this rhetorical trick would not be possible. So to keep that in mind, um, Keep that in mind when you read this, right? Um, and we're going to do more on the commas, right? Um, but anyways, um, so another thing is kind of like how the how I like get the word, if the word's at the end of a line, it gets promoted to a stress. Um, if it's like at the end of a phrase, you see like this, it gets promoted to the stress. Like That's kind of the same idea, right? Um, so again, midline trochi. Dash uh, rhetorical stress. Pretty easy, right? Like I said, sometimes these lines, and like I said, if you made this do, like why, why do you use? Totally acceptable. That'd be totally acceptable stress. No, no problems. Just keep in mind there will be some ambiguity, some variation, okay? So, next line. So great a sum of sums that can't not live. Okay, let's highlight some important words, right? We got great. That's a monosyllable word. We got sum, a sum of sums. Um, we got not. We got live, right? Not as an adverb, right? We got live. You could do can'ts too, but um, I don't know. I don't think that's needed. I think I actually think this yet yeah, cannot live. I think this is a uh, double ionic. I think we could call you could call that a double ionic. The cans and the not is very close together in stress, though it's not as clean as some other. But we'll just do it for fun, right? Just to give show you there could be some variation, right? So great a sum of sums yet can live. So we could say you know. And by the way, a double ionic guys is light, light, heavy, heavy, right? This isn't as clean as I'd like. It's not that clean. In fact, if you did this. You would demote this, right? You would demote that. So you could do that too. In fact, maybe that will do that because that's a cleaner. But you could have it as a double ionic, guys, right? So I make the pentameter. I'm just showing that there's variation. Like you're not gonna always gonna get the same uh, scam. But both a double ionic and this is an iambus still the same thing, right? A double ionic just means it's a rising rhythm, right across two iambus. Okay. So, anyways, next line uh, for having traffic with thyself alone. Okay, so do we have any important monosyllable words? No, no, we do not. Okay, what about multisyllable words? Do we got that? Well, yeah, we got the have, right? We got the have, and then we got the traf, traffic, uh, and then the uh, the self and thyself, and then we got the loan and alone. Cool. And then step three, do we have any? And I'll just break it apart. Do we have any uh, promotions or demotions? We do. We have 
a light, light, light. So we do with. And we have it, right? For having traffic with thyself alone. Now, this is just a. This is something I was taught, guys, and I'm. I'm I'm not saying that the teacher that taught me this is wrong or right, because, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to say Shakespeare was wrong with uh, him doing it, but he was not big, he was not big with putting a comma in between, on the first foot between this and this, right? He kind of like it's a pause in the rhythm, right, for having a trip, like, you know what I mean? So he wasn't big on, on this particular move, but uh, I'm kind of... I'm kind of in the middle of it. I kind of try not to do this, but if it does occur, I'm okay. It does, but just keep that in mind. Like that's just, this is the type of stuff you see in critiques, right? Good critiques. People pointing this out. Oops. Okay, I am big Batamda, right? So cool. So the next line. Um, Thou of thyself, thy sweet self, dost deceive, right? Quite a, quite a line. Um, so let's do step one. Do we have any important words? Well, we got the sweet. Um, and we have done the self in the past, but uh, it's pretty obvious that's not, he doesn't want that uh, highlighted. So let's not do that. Um, okay, do we have any multi-syllable words? We got the self and thyself. And we have the deceive and deceive. All right? We got any promotions? Well, we got self does D. Like I said, sometimes people the opponent well, this is obviously where he wants us to be struck, but this is a little bit stranger, right? I mean you could highlight this, but then you would be um you would either be um demoting it or turning it into a double ionic, right? I want to kind of keep this one simple. And then we got thou of thy, so the of gets promoted. So thou of thyself. Kind of see the uh, pattern. So I have a timbre. The weird thing about meters, like if you in a year from now you gave me the same line, I might scan. I might make this a double ionic. You know what I mean? I might change my mind. That's the beautiful thing about meter. Like I said, there is ambiguity. Be and be comfortable with that uncertainty. Be uncomfortable with that. Okay. There are some things that are. Like sometimes people scan stuff that is clearly long, wrong, and then there's sometimes scans that people do, and you're like, okay, I can see how they got that, right? So next, next line. Um, then how when nature calls thee to be gone? Um, so w let's take a look. Uh, step one: highlight all the important monosyllable words where we got calls, and we got gone, right? Then step two. Highlight the uh, primary stress and all the multi-syllable words, which is F1, which is the na nature. Cool. And then we got to say, okay, do we got any promotions? We got two. Then how, when? So how? And then we got to be the to be, the two, right? And then we get the, uh, we get the uh, easy, uh, Easy being, then how, when nature calls to thee be gone, right? Iambic pentameter. Nice, right? Okay, next one. Now, this line's a little hard. This line, I'm not going to lie, guys. Even this line, I, I have to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Sometimes the way people have pronounced words have changed over the 500 years since this has been written. Um... I'm not entirely sure how he was trying to pronounce this, so I'm going to throw a few theories out there, right? But it's, what acceptable audit canst thou leave? Okay, so step one, let's just highlight all the important monosyllable words. Um, this and can. Um, cool, right? And then we get into this thing. Cause, so let's go to the multi-syllable words. We got odd, right? So we kind of have, I just want to be acceptable. Acceptable is a kind of a weird word here. Um, we can see, right, these two are imbers, and this is going to become an imber. Let me, let me bring up acceptable, right? I'm going to break this apart just to show you. 
Okay, so there's a couple there's a couple theories we can go with this, right? Now the first theory is that they originally the first syllable was stressed, right? So it looks something like this. Acceptable, right? Which I don't really think is what sounds really weird. And I usually a bowl, you know, a bowl. Well, I guess you could say that like Abe. Able, but sometimes it's not quite that clean. But this is a this is a very possible uh, this is a very possible scan of this line, right? Now that's one. That's scan one. Now the second thing I'm gonna say is, and I don't think this is correct. I don't think that. I think what I have right now is probably closer to what he was trying to do. But I'm gonna show a different a different a possible scan. Okay, this might be considered one. Um, sorry, one syllable, and it might be unscented, right? Acceptable audit, acceptable audit, right? He's pronouncing this one, one syllable, okay? Um, and what he might be doing is something like this. Now, let me do this, accept, accept. What acceptable, acceptable odd it in cal, in can you, thou leave? This is called a headless iron burn. This is a they have used this in the past, and they have and they use this now. I am not entirely sure. Um, I am not entirely sure if this is an acceptable. Like, not all poets use every sort of form of um, form of. Uh, every type of substitution that has appeared in meter. So I don't quite know if this is something he, Shakespeare, would have done. I don't know if he would have used a headless Einberg. If this was a, a today poem, I totally would have called this a headless Einberg. But I'm not entirely sure which one of these two. I believe the first one I gave is probably closer to what he was thinking. Um, with with the, the first syllable being stressed at the time. Uh, this word, and you know what? If we come across later, acceptable again, we'll have to see how um, how he stresses it in a future poem. If we come across it, right? So keep, we'll keep that in mind. Um, but be aware that these are two scans that are possible. I don't really like either one, to be completely honest. I don't really like either one. Um, and the reason I don't like either one is I don't think I don't think he used the headless sign, but I don't think that's what he was thinking. But at the same time, I know I've seen poets treat this this syllable as one syllable, a bowl. Like I've seen people treat this as one syllable in older poetry. So on that end, I kind of agree with this, but I don't think I, the, the headless Einberg is not a, not a, uh, not in my, my view, a very good scan, right? Um, so we're going to put question mark right here. This is one of those lines we might come back later. Maybe, like I said, I see acceptable later, and I see exactly how he's scanning it, and we can plug how he, how he was pronouncing it in another poem right back in here and get a definite answer. But at this particular moment, I do not particularly uh, like that, this scan either way, right? So, but I give you two ways you can scan this, one with the headless iambic and one with the uh, completely iambic field. Like I said, it's hard for me to know exactly what he was thinking, uh, but... So be it. So anyways, next line. Thy unused beauty must be turned with thee. So again, step one, let's highlight the, and this is the pronounced, this was a single word. Um, mono, okay. And then the next one is um, uh, multi-syllable words, where we got the bu, and then we got that, you know, we got that negative, we got that negative, uh, Prefix again guys if we talked about that a few poems later like how sometimes negative prefixes take the stress like the un thy unused beauty right he's really putting it's really like a down like like you bad man you unused beauty like you can kind of see it right torical stress um do we have any uh promotions we do we have the t must be so the must must get promoted <laughs> the must must and then we got the with the again it's at the end of the line um promoted so thy unused beauty must be termed with the right we all got that cool right guys um and then this gives so this is iambic pentameter
and then the last line, which used it lives the executor B. Um, now I just want what what why do they have this little thing over the ed? They're telling you that it's not used, it's used. That's how he's pronouncing it. It's used, um, which we would never pronounce it today like that, but they did back then. So, um, but let's let's kind of go through it. Um, Multi-syllable. Which ones get it? It's just the lives. And then when we look at um, we look at multi-syllable words, so the U's, right? It's pronouncing this as a two-syllable word, and then the Zek. Okay. Now let's break. Let's break this apart. The exec utor. Cool, right? Um, so let's look at the promotions, right? It's gonna exec utor to be. So you gotta kind of have a. So we have a. We know B has to be highlighted, right, guys? We know it has to be highlighted because it's at the end of the line and it rhymes with the. So we know that. So we have light, 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 and then we get the or. So that that so that's how he's saying it. So which use it lives the executor to B, right? So I am big patamia. Right, and this gets a little, it gets a little funky, right? I understand. Like, so I wouldn't particularly, um, like I said, I don't particularly like using two promotions in a row, but this is a long word, and I'm not, I don't like people skipping long words because sometimes they get confusing. So, this, this is very doable, right? Like I said, you know you want the B needs to be uh, highlighted because it, because it needs to rhyme with the, and it's at the end of the line. So, we know this, right? So, anyways, guys, that's what we got today for this uh, poem. And like I said, this we'll, we'll come back to this line. If I find uh, someone else within the uh, the sonnets, he uses the word acceptable. I will look at the how he is pronouncing it within that poem and take that pronunciation, plug it here, and see what we get. Okay. But that's what I got for you guys for today. Um, the biggest thing, and I think the thing, the new thing I really want us to remember is that um. um We'll call them light words. Light words or syllables at the end of a line get promoted, right? This is the new, I know we've talked about this before, but going forward, this is a really a big thing I want us to pay attention, kind of like how the Trochi openings, right? So light words or syllables at the end of the line get promoted, like the B and the V and the, what else do we have? Just looking around and the Y here, right? So these are three examples of that happening, right? So we'll keep that in mind going future, right? Because I want every every episode, guys, we're going to keep... We go over a lot, guys, but if you just got one thing out of each episode, by the end of this, everything would make sense. This is the new thing I want us to get out of. Light words or syllables at the end of the line get promoted. That's the big, big, big thing I want us to take away from this, okay? So, and oh, another thing, words have changed... Pronunciation over the centuries. This this is another thing that people kind of can't wrap their head around. It. Um, the two things that people can't wrap their head around is that words have changed pronunciation over the centuries, and that um, people today pronounce words differently from region to region of the world. Because you know, there's five continents. That six five continents is being English. And you think everyone's going to say the words the same way, or pronounce the words the same way, or stress the same syllables that you do in within that word um, the same way. And that's just not true, right? So keep that in mind, guys. Um, uh, and that's the, that's the big thing I hope you get out of this. So these are the two things I hope you get. And I will see you guys on the next episode where we go over Sonnet 5. Thank you.